All right. We're going to be going three minutes now, right? Yeah. Go ahead. Okay. I'll start. Hold on. Okay. All right. In regards to uh, a few comments that Peter Diamond made in my opening statement, I pointed out how uh, uh, I anticipated the usage of data effectiveness in the Council of Florence, and indeed uh, none of the arguments that I brought forth were dealt with, but we'll go in depth on that a little bit later right now, but I'm going to continue responding with the Catechism of the Council of Trent statements. And I, um, moving onwards, I believe that it is very important to point out that um, um, for my research, I don't think any of the, the arguments that have been brought up uh, would not have been brought to the fore if not for the efforts of a certain Patrick Henry Omler. The arguments Omler puts forth regarding the new mass have not only been copied by the diamonds, but also by most state of the contest groups. Omler seemingly had little interaction with the scriptures as well as the patristic sources, or else I don't think he would have formulated such poor arguments. For instance, a literal translation of the Latin text dealing with the form for the wine in, in regards to the Catechism of Trent reads, for it is evident that in those words which signify the substance of the wine to be converted into the blood of the Lord, the form of the element is contained. Moving onward, onward we read, for it is evident that in those words which signify the substance of the wine to be converted into the blood of the Lord, the form of this element is contained. The Latin is clear in showing us that the essential form is included in the following words. As my close friend and theologian Michael Duddy points out, the authors show us that it is evident that the essential form is contained in those words which signify that the substance of the wine is converted into the blood of the Lord. It's from the Council of Trent, Session 24, Session 7, that the form of the Eucharist for the bread is defined and proven. The form for the bread, if I may say, is this is my body. Then we read that the form of the Eucharist for the wine is defined and proven. So just how is the form proven? We read that there are three ways, from Scripture, tradition, and from reason. The same for the bread is the same for the wine, from Scripture, tradition, and reason. What is interesting is that the Catechism explicitly states that this is my body is all that is needed for the form of the bread. In dealing with the wine, moving forward, we read, from reason, no one will be able to truly doubt concerning this form if he attends in this place also to what was said before concerning the form of the consecration of the element of the bread. For it is evident that the form of this, this element is contained in those words which signify that the substance of the wine is converted into the blood of the Lord. Since, therefore, these words openly describe this, it is clear that no other form needs to be determined. Notice clearly what the Catechism is saying. It follows that the form must be determined in these very same words for the wine. The very same words which, which signify transubstantiation for the bread are this is my body. As my good friend Mike Duddy points out, before demonstrating this proof regarding the wine, the Catechism declared that the essential form of the wine would be found within the long form cited by the Catechism. He did not say that the entire form is commensurate, is commensurate with the entire long form. Okay, time's up. I was going to respond. Well, first of all, you said that I didn't respond to any of your arguments. You didn't make any arguments. You cited the Council of Florence and de defectibus and said you were going to show this and that. You didn't actually show anything. And so that's a totally false statement on your part. I will deal with refuting Duddy's false argument, and I've studied his article. His argument is actually ridiculous. Before I get to that, um, I want to emphasize that it's rather curious that you would quote the Catechism of the Council of Trent when it has a big paragraph specifically stating that our Lord with reason, did not use the words for all in the consecration, because the consecration, as the Council of Florence dogmatically defined, is talking about the effect of saving action. Okay, it's not talking about those for whom Christ shed his blood. It's talking about those for whom Christ's blood is actually effective. And that's why to put for all in the consecration is a false signification. And you, frankly, make some of the most ridiculous arguments I've ever heard in your series on the New Mass, you, for instance, said that it's utter nonsense to assert that many is necessary in the consecration. Even though the Council of Florence, Pope St. Pius V, St. Thomas Aquinas, all say that every approved form of consecration has many, it follows from the fact that it must signify the faithful. You say it's utter nonsense. Um, uh, before I get to more of that, the Council, Catechism of Trent also uses the long form. And I know that Duddy tries to parse the Latin and say that, well, it's not actually saying that the form is the long form. It's saying that the form is contained within all these words. Well, 
that begs the question, if this is my body, this is my blood, is all you need, as you and Duddy believe, the Catechism would have just said that. It would have said, the form is, this is my body, this is my blood. No, it didn't say that. As even Duddy admits, it said the form is contained within all of the words down to, unto the remission of sins. Now, he's He's confused by the fact, well, why didn't it just say the form is all of the words? The reason it didn't say that is because there are some words that are identified therein which the removal of them does not vitiate the actual meaning. For instance, the word for. The word for is absolute, not absolutely necessary. If you remove that, you do not destroy the meaning. And so that's why it says that the words are contained within these words. But the fact that it lists the long form, not the short form, totally disproves your argument. And it's also the Catechism of Trent. We read in what it says on the form of the body, it makes reference to the decree of the Council of Florence, which is well known, to substantiate its point. And the Council of Florence says it's the long form, all of the words unto the remission of sins, including for you and for many. So I'm on my time's up. Do you want to respond for three minutes? Yeah, hold on. Let me just reset this thing. Okay. Okay, I'll go ahead now. Yeah. All right. In responding to a few things that uh, Peter Diamond has said, he's incorrect uh, that I did not bring up an argument in regards to Florence and data effectivists. I did point out that uh, Florence is clear in saying and any of the words are changed and it alters the meaning, then it would invalidate the sacrament. The change of the new Mass does not in- change the meaning of the Mass. It, the change in the wording does not change the meaning, and therefore it does not invalidate it. But moving on to, uh, to the fact that he is, simply cannot deal with any of the arguments de- detailing the Council of, uh, Catechism of the Council of Trent, instead he formulates the fact that why he thinks the Catechism says uh, what it says. Well, it, the plain and simple fact is that is not what the Latin is saying. The Latin is saying exactly what Mr. Duddy put forth, and if he's not going to be able to deal with what the Latin is saying, then pretty much he can't deal with what the catechism says. But regardless, the catechism is not an infallible document. It's just an important thing to bring up because he uses this argument over and over. But anyhow, just so that I will not misrepresent my opponent, I've written down exactly what it says word for word in regard to the formula for many. The claim he makes is, no one rite ever proved of throughout the entire history of the Catholic Church has used a form of consecration that uses the word for all. Well, one not need to bring up ancient rites, but it would suffice to simply point out that an ancient prayer from the 300s shows that all and many were indeed not only interchangeable among the fathers as well, as well but that all was perfectly fine to be used in the consecration of the Eucharist. The very term is brought up and used by Ephraim the Syrian when he said, This is truly my blood, which is shed for all of you in a consecration that he brings up and in a consecration that he specifically says are Christ's words. Uh, I'm not sure if anybody caught that, but this is my blood, which is shed for all of you. It isn't hard. You can stop the audio recording and rewind and hear it again. An important patristic witness shows us just how worthless the for many argument really is. We can see that even in the fathers, for all and for many were interchangeable. It really made no difference, as Ephraim shows us. As long as what is called my body and my blood are intoned, Ephraim shows that once the bread is called my body, it indeed becomes the body of Christ. We also read that once the wine is declared his own blood, it was his blood. It is significant to find a patristic witness in about the mid-300s affirming a formula that includes for all rather than for many. And it further shows that whether for all or for many was used, this formula had a little of any worth among the patristic witnesses. And in fact, this very homily of Ephraim the Syrian was used and was even, um, was even uh, said to be valid by the great biblical scholar Jerome. In fact, throughout many churches during, uh, during Ephraim the Syrian's day, right after scripture was read, these very portions of his homily were read in churches. And it's, a, so it's quite uh, interesting that we never hear that um, Ephraim the Syrian was an error here or that this is blasphemous that he used such a formula in, in his consecration. Okay, I'll respond to that. Well, yeah, what you s- okay, what, what you said there is completely untrue. And see, you obviously don't understand that there are many ancient anaphoras that are circulated which were never approved by the Church. In fact, many of the theologians in the Middle Ages dealt with this very issue. And you can actually read an article about it in the Catholic Encyclopedia, West Syrian Rite. The eminent liturgical 20th century liturgist Adrian Fortescu uh, pointed this out. He actually said that Brightman mentioned 64 liturgies as known, at least by name. 
notes of this bewildering number of anaphoras will be found. And he says, many contain monophysite ideas. Some are insufficient at the consecration so as to be invalid. So just because some ancient anaphora says this or that, that does not prove anything. The church never approved any of those which contain all. That's simply untrue. And this was further pointed out by Pope Benedict XIV in his encyclical Ex Quo, 1756. He said, he pointed out how many of these Eastern missiles were uh, corrupted with different errors. And he ordered the correction of these missiles, and he says, accordingly, the Roman pontiffs have often had to see it to it that missiles, rituals, breveries, and martyrologies were newly issued in improved editions after appropriate corrections. But your ridiculous false argument could be further demonstrated by anyone who can think, because if that were true, why would the Catechism of Trent say boldly that all was not used in the consecration by Jesus with reason?